Um, well, firstly, I suppose having Ross in the team and knowing what his uh, talents were and trying to utilise those um, for the best results for the students, but also to keep him interested and on board and in the team, really. And, and secondly, the, we're moving towards more diverse products, not just plain essays. We're using film and visual media um, that are replacing the traditional essay work. And we had some really great stuff that our students had made, and we really wanted some kind of display case, if you like, for it. So um, there was that element, and I suppose the um, inspiration uh, probably was from uh, Game of Thrones, that um, the intro of Game of Thrones, where it comes down on the map and uh, if I focus in on the different cities, and I thought that I'd, I'd, I was just looking at that, and I thought that would be so cool if that was Scotland and all the FE colleges and SQA and College Development Network, and you could, like, say you were a sociology teacher and you wanted an idea or you wanted to discuss an idea, you could go on to your kind of virtual kind of Scotland FE sector and find the room or the person that you uh, wanted to discuss an idea with. So obviously that was a little bit grandiose, so we, we, we started with a much lower uh, lower level. Yeah, I think like, uh, like Cherry says, we're using a lot more creative material in the classrooms now, doing a lot more kind of diverse stuff, using things like film and a lot of you know, image-based material. One of the things that, that, that tends to be kind of lost when you start doing that sort of thing, though, is you, you tend to focus on producing the material and not so much on distributing it. So this was a, an opportunity to sort of try and find a way that you know, we could develop a platform that would lend itself to distributing the material in a way that, that worked for the material. Um, most, I mean, I think one of the kind of key things for us was uh, really we're using diverse learning products, but we're also quite a diverse background. Ross is from a, a film and image and media background, and I'm from a social science background. And... Um, I think one of the kind of real positive things was to see it as a combination of those two two aspects. That I think if Ross had developed it on his own, it wouldn't be the thing that it is. And if I'd have given a just a standard brief to a developer, it wouldn't be what it was. I think it was very good that we had shared interests, shared aspirations. We knew the students, we knew what they liked, we knew what what they what 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 worked for them and, and although we weren't 100 percent sure what the end product would be uh, and what its uses would be we knew it would be useful and we knew it would be of use and of value it wasn't so much a challenge but i think one of the the important considerations that we we had in the early days one of the important decisions we had to make was not so much what we're going to put into the virtual tour, what we're going to stock the virtual classroom with, but it was choosing the virtual tour as the most appropriate platform. So we had a bunch of visual materials, we knew what we were doing with our students, we knew the sort of stuff that, that they were producing, that they were working on in the class, and the challenge was really to decide the best way to, to show that stuff off, and that's what the virtual tour does really well, I think. And I think one of the beauties of this is that it can be added to so easily. Um, and I think any department or area of uh, this college, or eventually any college anywhere, if they've got creative products, then all that really has to happen is to set up a room and then stock the products in the room. And I think if all you have is essays or spreadsheets, there's no point with this, um, unless you want to show how lovely your chairs are or, or what have you. There, there is no educational validity to it. But I think one of the good things is we're moving from traditional now to diverse, more creative ways of teaching and ways of evidencing your work. And I think what, what's really key here is that people need to be able to see a pool of that material so they get ideas and they pass them on. So it needs to be something which is firstly a, an easy place for people to go and look around and, 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 and see what's being done. The other thing is, I think, really, really important is for the, the, for the 
new students who are coming in, when we, we, we tried it out at the last set of interviews, we showed the prospective students uh, the virtual classroom and the sorts of things that the students were doing. And usually when you do a presentation, not so many students will say, oh, the presentation was great, you know, it really made me want to come on the course. And what we discovered this time was that students were saying, when we said to them, you know, the standard questions, so why social science, why did you want to do this course? They were referring to the presentation and they were saying, oh, you know, oh, and well, I wanted to do it anyway, but now I've seen the stuff you're doing, I really, really, really want to place on the course. So accidentally, it's a very good PR and marketing tool, although we're both kind of with Bill Hicks when it comes to marketing. So, um, but education, it's a very valid tool because it shows students what things can be done creatively and they will feed off, other, uh, uh, off, of, off of one another and off of those ideas. It makes them braver to push really what they're doing to kind of try and do, do something more imaginative and, and bolder than, than the traditional work, yeah. So there's been a couple of, I think, key impacts on our current students. Um, in one sense, it's really good for the students who are going to progress to the next level of the course because they're often a little bit maybe nervous about what's going to come. They think that maybe, oh, is the next level going to be too tough for me? Oh, what goes on in that oh, scary class through there? And the virtual tour is a good way they can go into the virtual tour and they can you know, access the materials, they can see what the, you know, if they're NC6 or whatever, they can see what the HNCs have been doing and get some ideas of what's, what's going to come and build their confidence about progressing through the course. Um, but also on a kind of a confidence kind of perspective in the other direction, um, students, it's, it's a good opportunity for students to look back at the work that, that they've done over the course of the year and kind of have that bit of a confidence boost by kind of seeing all the stuff that they have achieved and reminding themselves of all the kind of the, the really kind of good creative work that they've achieved over, over the previous year in the college. Okay, so uh, as, as you move towards more creative and diverse assessments, I think what, what staff need to have is the confidence to move into these sorts of areas and to understand that it's not about being an artist or a singer and a filmmaker and a social sociologist and a psychologist all at once. It's about delivering the teaching and learning more creatively. You don't have to be an artist, but you can consider that your students could use art in, in a response or uh, in, in, in some kind of an, an assessment. And I think the, this type of assessment delivers lots of cultural capital, delivers lots of social capital, boosts self-esteem, works perfectly with cooperative learning. It just is a, a really, a really nice fit. Um, in terms of other institutions adopting this, I mean, I think if you've got a Ross or if you've got someone that's got Ross's skill set and you've got staff and students who are interested in creative and diverse assessments and sharing resources and these types of things, then, you know, it's a pretty straightforward, straightforward affair. And I guess like any technological thing that maybe the first few rooms you might do might scratch your head and make you puzzle and have to find a solution. But the more you do, like anything, the, the quicker you'll get. So I'm sure there'll be a point in the future where Ross can just go... Psh, psh, psh. <laughs> We're almost there already. Yeah, and, and produce a room. And the, the, the thing is not producing the room. The thing is having the visually attractive work to go in the room. That's the okay. thing. So, so far, it's just been developing it. Um, I think efficiencies somewhat... Um, I think there will be lots of unintended consequences. I, I suppose one of the good things is now, uh, when I go out and, or Ross and I have been out and done training and information and best practice sessions, we've actually got, if you like, a, 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 single, a single document or a single platform. And whatever people are interested in, whether they're interested in a session on cooperative learning or whether they're interested in using film in for to teach social sciences or whether they're interested in students being uh, working on creative solutions to things that actually we've got all of that material in the one uh, package so whereas before if I were, if I were going out to 
do a presentation or a training session with uh, colleagues from another institution or even within the institution. You know, I'd have to prepare. Prepare now. I just pick up, you know, the the, the memory stick, and it, it's all it's all on there. And we can focus on whatever people are are interested in um, within that. Um, in terms of long term efficiencies. I think there, there are lots because one of the things is that we've got lots of separate sites and lots of separate colleges with lots and lots of learning materials, which are, you know, you know if you take, say, a sociology unit for HN, it's being, rep the learning materials are being replicated in so many different places. And we have got official mechanisms to share things, so you know, SQA and uh, it will keep a bank of assessments and there are cooperative learning assessments held uh, by the College Development Network. But these often involve going through a quality manager and filling in forms. That what this would provide is a nice informal information sharing thing and also giving feedback. So for example, now you might be split over two or three sites. Um, there's lots of people seem to be traveling up and down and backwards and forwards, often only one person in a car, you know, the cost, environmental cost of that and the actual financial cost of, of sending people all over the place should be using much more online uh, online material. And I suppose at the end of the day, when you combine this with other new things, like for example, the um, different assessment mechanisms, like um, Live Assess um, could be combined with this sort of thing so that you actually don't need to physically go and visit sites, um, and but you you can actually probably communicate more. Um, for example, one of the things we've got on the platform is a, a draw with cooperative learning materials in it. What I would really like to be able to do would be to have that platform where, say, my colleagues from Dundee or Edinburgh or Aberdeen can go into that draw just as though they could in a physical space take out the cooperative learning resource that I might have wrote, written, and, and look at it and go, oh, you know, you should do that, Cherry, or why don't you do this, or add that there, and then put it back in the drawer, and then I get it, and go, oh, yeah, good idea. What do you think, so-and-so? So you're working cooperatively, um, you know, particularly where people are single subject specialists. You haven't got somebody to bat around your subject ideas. Uh, and you can also expose them, particularly with things like cooperative learning, you don't just want subject specialists, you know, you want joiners and construction people, people from hairdressing and beauty, to look at social science stuff and say, ah, have you thought of? By the same token that, say, hair and beauty might write a cooperative learning task, or construction might do, and they might want the sociologist to have a, a, a bit of input. So it would encourage cross-team, cross cross-campus, cross-group working. I mean... I think it's one of those ideas or one of those things that has no limits in terms of how useful or how splendid it, it, it could it could be ultimately for, for not massive amounts of investment either. Yeah. One of the most important things that we've learned from the process I think is the need to have the materials as organised as possible and to have a, a, certain, a certain amount of rigidity, if you like, to the structure of, of the organisation, but at the same time it's got to be a system that's as, as flexible and as open as possible. So, you know, if Cherry's developing some wild and wonderful sort of cooperative learning event for, for students across the college um, and she wants to, to kind of get that in the platform and show it off in the best way possible, it's got to be able to do that. It's got to be flexible enough to, to kind of incorporate that sort of stuff.